So objections. Here's one. Uh, I mean, anybody convinced by Chalmers so far? Uh, zombies are conceivable, and then we can just move to their possibility, and so physicalism is false. Well, if you uh, do agree with them, then you might be subject to the zombic hunch, okay? what Dennett calls the zombic hunch. He says, although I'm not quite sure about this, that he can feel the zombic hunch as vividly as anyone. Um, when I squint just right, he says, it does sort of seem like consciousness would be something in addition to all the things it does for us and to us, some special private glow, consciousness, glowing in us, okay? Um, that would be absent in any robot, but is all but unimaginable uh, as a mere physical activity of the brain. But, he says, I don't give any credit to the hunch. Okay. So in general, this is a, a strategy of um, Dennett's. Uh, he calls it the philosopher's syndrome, uh, mistaking a failure of the imagination for an insight into necessity. Uh, so Chalmers thinks he has uh, a, an insight into possibility and necessity here from uh, having his zombic hunch. And Dennett is just saying, no, you're just subject to the philosopher's syndrome. Uh, really, you're just suffering from a failure of imagination. What kind of failure of imagination? Well, here's somebody else, uh, Patricia Churchland, um, who's put some flesh on, on that idea. So she says, look, whether you can imagine or not uh, a phenomenon being explained in a certain way, that's just a psychological fact about you, okay? Um, it's not uh, an objective fact, not an insight into necessity uh, about the nature of the phenomenon of, uh, itself. Um, so it's just an epistemological fact about your ignorance, given our current knowledge, uh, and we can't understand this thing. Uh, it's not a metaphysical fact about the nature of reality. So that's basically expressing the same idea as Dennett. It's just a failure of imagination, she says. She thinks that in particular what's going on here is we've been hornswoggled. Um, so she thinks that if you restrict your attention to prototypical cases like um, uh, color vision and whether there could be a zombie and so on, um, we end up being uh, hornswoggled because uh, uh, being hornswoggled here just means that we're, we're tricked into thinking that um, the class of cases that we're trying to explain is well defined. But he, she thinks that's not the case. And that the easy problems are a lot harder than they seem. That Chalmers sort of doesn't do justice to them, justice to them when he calls them easy problems. Um, and if those problems are harder than they seem, okay, just try and do a little bit of cognitive neuroscience and you'll see how tough they are. Uh, then how do we know that this alleged hard problem is even harder? So she thinks that we're just being hornswoggled here into thinking that we've got some uh, easily definable class of cases that are the easy questions and then we've got this uh, hard problem that is um, distinct from them. And she thinks, look, shut up and do experiments. That's her uh, line on this, actually. Um, learn the science, do the science, and see what happens. Uh, we don't really know what we're talking about here yet until we just um, uh, see what happens by doing the science. Um, and I've put a couple of links in here for anybody who wants to follow up on these uh, issues later. So basically, she's saying that what Chalmers is trying to do is make an argument from ignorance. Uh, I've no idea how uh, phenomenal states could be physical states, therefore they couldn't be, roughly. And she thinks, well, just because you don't have any idea about how they could be right now, uh, doesn't license any conclusion about what we might discover down the line. The Chalmers, in turn, grants something like this. He says, okay, look, maybe conceivabilities are, uh, conce conceivability arguments are limited by our own um, intellectual limitations. And uh, so conceivability tells us nothing about logical possibility. But he's got another way of framing the issue, which is to say that conceivability is a guide, nevertheless, to explainability. And if zombies are conceivable, then no reductive explanation of consciousness is going to work or be satisfactory. And so you can switch focus here uh, a little bit and talk about uh, the move from conceivability to explanation uh, instead. And he's going to say that basically, uh, no reductive explanation is going to do the work that we need it to do here. So he thinks that consciousness escapes the net of uh, reductive explanation. 
Now, really, I'm just going to stick these slides up and we won't get a chance to talk about them too much, but we've seen two kinds of uh, explanation that we can give, an identity reduction, like water is H2O and so on, and the identity theorists tried to do that with the mind. But you also have uh, a kind of explanatory or inter-theoretic uh, reduction where you might try to reduce a theory in one science uh, to uh, a theory in uh, maybe a lower, so-called lower level science or something like that. Um, and I've got a quote from Ernest Nagel here who talked a lot about that. And he's claiming that no reductive explanation would work for uh, consciousness. But I just want to point out before we finish that it's not entirely clear that that's true. So by all means, we can say that the identity reduction doesn't work, for one thing, because of multiple realizability. But Kim, as Kim points out in, uh, the, in his book, it seems like you can have some sort of explanatory reduction without that kind of identity reduction. And we looked at this um, in a few lectures ago. So you might say that X, some uh, person is in uh, C fibers firing state, CF state, uh, and in systems like X, so systems like that particular human or something, um, a CF state is caused by tissue damage and uh, it's being instantiated in the agent, causes the agent to uh, emit aversive behavior. And so then you say that pain is defined um, uh, uh, conceptually as uh, the state that's caused by tissue damage and that causes aversive behavior. Uh, and then you can license the conclusion that X is in pain, and if X is in CF state, X is in pain. And you're giving some sort of um, explanatory reduction there uh, of uh, pain without making an identity reduction. And Chalmers wants to say that uh, even when you move from the conceivability to uh, explanatory reduction idea, um, saying that you can't get that explanatory reduction and not moving to possibility, it's not clear that that's right. He thinks that, he thinks that it is right that zombies show that pain can't be defined in this functional way, um, but it's not clear that he's right about that. Um, questions, confusions, expressions of alarm before we finish? Or will I just vacate the premises and leave you in the capable hands of Stephen to clear up all um, confusions. Any questions about this before we move on? We're going to move on to something totally different next week, panpsychism. Um, but the basics to be clear on for today are that you've got um, the claim that zombies are conceivable, and you've got to be clear about the kind of conceivability at issue. And then the move from there is going to be fairly easy to say that they're logically possible if they're conceivable in the right way. And once you've done that, it seems like local supervenience is going to fail, and so physicalism will fail. And all of this stuff about uh, uh, whether the zombie hunch should be trusted, that's a way of questioning whether uh, having that hunch, thinking that it's conceivable, is actually uh, warranted, whether that uh, is something that we can do. Uh, so they're just ways of pressing back on that premise of the argument. But the most important thing to be clear on for, for today is just that argument and everything else that I showed was just a way of fleshing out the, the two claims, essentially, uh, in that argument. So, on the assumption that there are no questions, because I'm giving you the opportunity to ask them now and you're not asking them, we will leave it there and come back and talk about why trees have minds next week. <laughs>